of painting. Hi everyone and welcome to Allison's World of Painting. Today we're going to paint this water lily scene. There's lily pads and lotus flowers. So let's get started on this lily pad painting. I have three brushes that I'm going to use today. I've got a large one, a medium sized one, and a smaller one. And I wanna make sure at least one of my brushes has something where I can get a nice sharp point. I'm gonna use my angled brush for that. When I go to make my lotus flowers, I want a nice petal shape that has a nice sharp point on it so I can use that. I can also use a pointed brush to do that too. Anything that'll give me a nice sharp point. The colors that I'm going to use today, this is a, a dark blue. This one's called Ink Spot, but I can use a primary blue that's dark, an ultramarine, and with the dark blue, I can get various shades of blue by adding white. So of course, I've got my white. I've got yellow, which I can use to mix with the blue to get green. I won't be using a straight green. I can get different shades of green by varying the amount of yellow and blue that I use together. And then I've got the purple for the lotus flowers. And you might want to make your lotus flowers in yellow or orange or pink. So you can make those flowers any color that you like. So we'll get started by putting on our background. On my palette, I've got my blue, my white, and my yellow. And I'm going to start by putting the middle third of my canvas in blue. I'm going to use horizontal strokes. If my canvas is really textured, I'll probably want to go in different directions just to fill in the texture and then smooth it out after with the uh, horizontal strokes. Now the bottom third of my painting, I'm not washing off my brush, I'm just going in with the yellow. It's got a lot of blue still on the brush, so it'll, it'll turn green when I pick up the yellow. And I'll do the bottom third of my painting with the yellow which will come out green. It starts to feel a little dry. I can add a little water, dab it off on my paper towel, and it'll feel a lot more fluid. And I can take a little of the blue and bring it back down into the green. I don't want to call these stripes because they really blend one into the other. It's like you're not going to know where one starts and the other stops. Add some more blue. And I'm going to pick up some white. Go right into the white, which will come out light blue or light green depending on what colors you still have in your brush. Blend those right in. We're creating the background for our lily pond. It's water. Okay, I'm gonna stop there, let that dry. I can use a hair dryer to um, speed along the drying process, and then we'll come back and add our lily pads. Okay, we're ready to add the lily pads now. Notice in my thumbnail painting that I did that I've got a large lily pad right here in front, and then they kind of go back into the distance and get smaller and thinner as they go back. 
So I'm going to make a mixture of blue and yellow to get green. And I'll put the large lily pad right here. Kind of in the uh, lower section of that blue area. And they'll get thinner and smaller as they go back into the distance. Kind of stagger them a little bit. Maybe some are close together. Some are farther apart. And as I go back, I'm not worrying so much about getting that perfect oval shape. I'll give each lily pad a little highlight of yellow at the top where the sun's hitting it. And a little shadow of blue. I'm not rinsing off my brush in between, just picking up the blue and adding a little shadow underneath each lily pad. using my angled brush here to get a nice thin line there. And because they're in water, each lily pad has a reflection. And I wanna make the reflection of the lily pad the same size and shape as the original lily pad. So right underneath, we'll make a lily pad under each one, same size and shape. And not so worried about the ones in the back. And because it's a mirror reflection, the highlight this time is gonna be on the bottom. So I'll use a little yellow and Thinking about where the reflections are, add a little highlight to the bottom of the, the bottom of those and a little shadow on the top because that's how it's reflecting into the water. Make sure you know which ones are your reflection lily pads. Okay. For even more highlight, I can wipe off my brush and add a little white to the tops of those for added highlight. And same in the reflection. Okay, so I have my lily pads and now I'm ready to let that dry and add the lotus flowers. Before we paint our lotus flower on our actual painting, let me show you how to draw a lotus flower, what it looks like. So we've got that center petal that's like a teardrop, and we're going to put two of the same type petal shapes off to the side, kind of slanting to the side. Then right in the middle of the center petal, we'll draw an identical petal right underneath. And because this petal is in front of this one, we won't see this part here. And we'll do the same. We're gonna put two petals off to the side here. And these are the front petals, so we won't see the back ones. Now we're going to put another petal that kind of connects the back to the front on either side. And we'll make two long skinny petals coming out of the bottom of the lotus flower here and a short one kind of coming out in either direction that way. 
So that's the basic shape of our lotus flower. And we're going to draw that on our painting before we, we um, paint it in, okay? I'm using a piece of chalk here to draw in my lotus flower and I'm going to put it in the lower left-hand corner of my painting. It'll overlap this larger lily pad in the front, and I wanna make sure when I make that center petal that I have enough room on the side to make sure those petals can come out this way. So I'll make, with chalk, that center petal, three off to the side like we did before, in the center of that petal, we'll start our middle one. We can get rid of those lines that are behind it. Again, off to each side. And a connecting petal. And the long skinny ones off to the side. And a smaller one right underneath. So there's our basic lotus shape. We're not going to worry about um, drawing in each of the lotus flowers in the background. We'll just kind of paint those in and they'll fade off into the distance. So we'll mix our purple and white paint and get that lotus flower painted in. Okay, I've added some purple paint to my palette. I've got my white, and I'm going to go in with that pointy angled brush, the middle size brush, to kind of fill in the back petals first. And I want those back petals to be the darkest. So I'll go in with my dark purple and paint in, I'm gonna pick up a little white And darken that up later. So there's a little bit of variance to the to the shade of that petal. It's okay if I overlap those front petals a little bit. They'll get painted over. Do the side one here. Add a little white so it shows up. These are gonna be darker in the background. And as long as there's enough variance where you can see where one petal starts and the other one begins, you'll be okay. Okay, now we'll add those front petals. They'll be a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna pick up a little more white. Just a little purple in there. And even add more purple just in spots where it's not going to mix in with pe separate petals Chalk just kind of disappears right into the paint. Okay, now I'm not going to draw the other lotus flowers. If you feel like you want to, that's fine. I'm just gonna go in with the paint because I practiced drawing some lotus flowers on paper. I kind of know the basic shape. And so I'm going to just kind of make that petal, the side ones. Make those a little darker. Get some white. Wanna do that side petal there. The ones in the front. Just know the basic shape of those flowers. Get 
smaller as they go back. And I'm not so worried about the exact shape. Even just kind of dabbing at this point where I've got my brush the right size and shape. I can just put those in there like that as they go back. Smaller ones. Could even probably switch to my small brush at this point. I think I will. I've got my smaller brush here, and I'll use that to make those lily flowers off in the distance. And I'm not even worrying. At this point, it's just like a little fuzzball, a little shape of it. One over here all by itself. Some close together, some farther apart. Try and get a little dark purple in there, a little light purple in there. Okay, now there's also buds that haven't opened up yet. So I want to make, hmm, let's make one right here. It's basically that first petal shape. It's a bud that hasn't opened up yet. There's one there. That's a little big for being that far back. One here. They're smaller as they get back in the distance. Okay, now we're going to um, ground those lily pads so they've got something to sit on. They need a little shadow and a little darkness underneath. So I'm going to wash off my brush, dry it off, and go back into the green, which will be my yellow and blue. I'm gonna get kind of a dark green. And just go underneath the lily pad, the little lotus flower, to create a shadow that's under there, something for it to sit on so it's you not know, just floating in the water there. And the butts can have little leaves to sit in too. Let's see if you can see that. Each little lotus flower can have something to sit on. Okay, so now the lotus flowers, of course, need reflection. So we'll go back. I'm going to pick up my medium sized brush and some more of the purple, and I'm really going to water down that purple. really wet. And if I feel like it's too wet, I can dab it in my paper towel and just create the same size and shape as the lotus flower that's there. Not worrying about those petals, anything like that. And I'm going in horizontal strokes, adding a little bit of dark in there. Thinking about mirroring where the darks are and the lights are. And the buds will still have that bud shape. Now this one seems to be in front of a lily pad, but that's okay. Because the lily pad is wet, it's still going to make a reflection. And the buds have the bud shape. As long as it's the same size and the same basic shape, it'll look like a reflection. And I'll wash off my brush, dry it off, 
get a little more of that green because the green part will need a reflection too. It's dark. And keeping in mind that it's a mirror image, those buds are going to have little casings that come upside down. And here it's just a dot back there. We're not even going to worry about that. Okay, we'll let that dry and then we'll add some things that make it look like it goes off into the distance, kind of hazy in the background. We'll do some glazing and I'll show you how to do that. If any of your reflections look too, uh, too defined, you can just take a little water and blur them out because those are really hazy, they're reflections. So we'll let that dry and then we'll add our glazing. So our last step is to add some glazing. Glazing would be a very watered down mixture of water and paint. And with that glazing, with that watered down mixture, I'm going to go across the top third of my painting with a white and water glaze. It'll make it look misty like it's going off into the distance. And my water isn't actually even that clean. It's kind of dirty. It's got a lot of the green and all kinds of colors mixed in there, but that's okay. I still use that water. And I'll go into my white paint and make a really watered down mixture. And with that watered down mixture, I can just go over the very top third of my painting where the back lily pads and lotus flowers are. I'm using my big brush and I'm actually going all the way down my painting. But as I get to the bottom of my painting, really there's nothing on my brush at this point. There's no water, there's no paint, it's just making it really cohesive. Okay, so we've got the background in the distance and there's our water lily painting. I hope you enjoyed making that and thank you for joining me today.